If I were a rich man, idle deedle idle digga digga deedle idle dum. All day long I'd bitty bitty bum. If I were a wealthy man, wouldn't have to. You probably hard. didn't know that Howard Ruff is a singer too, and that's his latest album. As a matter of fact, Howard, you have a musical background. You studied in school. Yes, that's not only my latest album, it's my only album. <laughs> We're going to do another one. It's called Howard Ruff's Greatest Hits. It's exactly the same, <laughs> the same. as the first one. Same. Beautiful. Yeah, save a lot of money that way. I love it. That, that's, that's very, that's very yeah, good. Yeah, I did make a living as a singer for many years. In fact, I majored in music education in college and minored in economics. And uh, I stayed with my musical career until I realized there were, uh, I was one of America's 2,000 best baritones and 200 were making a living. <laughs> uh, wh what school is this? Uh, Brigham Young. Brigham Young. So you're, you spend some time in Utah. Oh yeah, in fact, uh, I went to school up there and then we just moved there two years ago from California. Are uh, you talking about Salt Lake City? No, we live near Provo. Oh. I've got 10 acres, uh, about 20 minutes out of downtown Provo. We're in greater metropolitan Springville. Living the good life. Oh, yes, living uh, the kind of life that, uh, that drains the tensions out of you when you go home from one yeah. of these book tours and all these appearances. It's a, it's a wonderful way to live. I can well understand. The only good thing Las Vegas <coughs> has, at least we're close, and it's not a major trip to get here. Howard, you have a new book, Survive and Win in the Inflationary 80s. This is Howard's latest book, and uh, by all expectations and what's been happening, it's going to be as big as your other book? Well, I don't know whether it will or not. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, a book with inflation in the title, mm -hmm. at a time when the inflation rates seem to be the lowest they've been in years, inflation rates coming down during the recession, seemed from a marketing point of view to be a miracle of bad timing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's going to be very prophetic um, in that it's times like this when inflation seems to be in, in retreat that the all the greatest buying opportunities, investment opportunities materialize. When inflation is down, then gold is down, and silver is down, and real estate's in trouble, and diamonds, and all the investment markets we've made so much money in over the last few years. So uh, calling uh, a continuation of inflation at this time, if, if I'm right, at a time when inflation seems to be in retreat, and those markets are flat on their back and everything is cheap, uh, should look good pretty soon. But right now, uh, the world is convinced inflation is going away. Is um, the Federal Reserve, we're having a problem with, I don't know if it's a problem with too much money or a scarcity of money. There's a problem with some people <laughs> having money. Some people want to pick our pockets to get our money. And um, wh what is it? Well, actually, it's both. We have, we've created too much money, so as a result, we have an inflation. But the demand for money is greater than even that inflationary supply we've created. And so you end up with high interest rates. So the, the supply is short relative to what people want, but it's too great. It's increasing too rapidly from the standpoint of inflation. Yeah, you have to understand what inflation is in order to understand that. Inflation was defined by uh, someone once as watering the milk. Mm -hmm. uh, if you add 10% water to the milk, you have to drink 10% more liquid to get the same amount of milk. And it's mm -hmm. the same way with money. You, you inflate the supply. In fact, the term inflation refers to inflating the amount of money in existence. It's a monetary phenomenon. It always has been. But we've become so addicted to it that the demand for it is increasing faster than the Federal Reserve is willing to supply it and uh, in the interest of s trying to stop inflation, which I liken to uh, tying the uh, uh, safety valve down on the boiler while the, government, while the Congress is turning up the heat by giving us big deficits. Uh, and something will have to give. They're going to have to untie the safety valve or something is going to burst. It's going to burst loose into a hyperinflation. Uh, the only question is whether or not it's going to be relatively controlled or whether it's going to bust loose into some totally uncontrolled monster. But the Federal Reserve Board, of course, is the mechanism which we use to create money. Well, this may be a very elementary question. Maybe I'm not, I'm sure I'm not the first to have uh, questioned this, and mm -hmm. nor will I be the last. The Constitution of the United States originally said that the Congress shall have the power to coin money. Congress does not... To coin money and regulate the value thereof. But they don't do that. The Federal Reserve does. And that's well, a private organization. Well, they, in effect, have subcontracted the job. Uh -huh. uh, as, uh -huh. what, as what it amounts to, that's a constitutional justification. The Federal Reserve Board operates under a mandate from Congress, under laws issued by Congress. And uh, there's an interesting point relative to this. I met with one of the governors of the Federal Reserve Board with a group of newsletter writers uh, about oh, six, eight months ago. And I asked them, I asked him point blank, 
<coughs> are you going to uh, be willing <coughs> to keep the money supply and give us high interest rates in, in the interest of fighting inflation until you broke in the back of the economy? And he said, well, no, we wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, then could you defy the president if he wanted lower interest rates? And he said, uh, yes, we could. And would you? Yes, we would if we thought it was necessary. Could you defy the Congress of the United States? He said, no, that's another uh, can of worms. We operate under legislation written by the Congress. They can change the rules, and, we, and all they'd have to do is tell us what they want, and we would have to do it. Consequently, one of the reasons I'm betting that they're going to loosen up the money supply and that we're going to have an explosion of money and lower interest rates <coughs> is we're in election year. And there's nothing a congressman hates worse than inflation unless it's uh, falling prices, which affect the income of his constituents. And so they will arrest the, the deflationary trend. They will arrest the recession by simply mandating that money be made available for everybody in society who feels there's a need for it. Howard, it just seems the fact that uh, the money problem is not an economic issue, which it should be, as much as it, as it is a political issue. The fact being gold was $850 an ounce somewhere in there during the Carter administration. Reagan's in there, which I'm not making either one right or wrong. That's not my point. But a different administration comes in, and now gold's at, I think it was 315 or 18 today or today. Why is that? Well, gold is an inflation hedge. People buy it when they think uh, money is losing value, and they sell it when they think that maybe inflation is over or easing up. And it always has been. Uh, you can have an international crisis, and that's usually good for 50 bucks for a little while until the crisis blows over. But you have to have rising inflation for that. Well, what we now have is the Carter recession. Uh, the, the actions of a president don't really pay off economically or hurt you economically either way for anywhere from 18 months to two years. And every inflation moves up like this, takes a dip with a recession as you create a, all kinds of damage to the economy through the, the inflation, then forms a new base because you run big deficits during these recessions and then establishes a new base and takes off again. And so we are in the Carter recession right now. And Presidents always take credit for everything good that happens, and they get blamed for everything bad that happens, but the Congress is where it is made. President Reagan didn't have anything to do with this. The last Congress created this, uh, this inflation with the enthusiastic uh, support of, and, and the actions and policies of the Carter administration. Consequently, I, uh, uh, I, uh, gold crashed and burned as a result of that, which is what makes it a wonderful vibe. Would you like me to give you a financial principle that I have discovered all by myself, which will make you all rich? I'd love Are it. You ready for this? I'm ready. Buy low, sell high. Now, isn't that neat? Say that again. Buy low, sell high. And remember, you heard it here first. What I'm saying is, that right now, while gold's flat on its back, nobody wants it. Now, when it gets up seven or eight hundred dollars again, everybody will want it. Now, that's stupid. Uh, Baron Rothschild said you buy when the blood is running in the streets, and the blood is running in the streets of the, of the gold market, and the silver market, and the real estate market, and all those markets. It just creates opportunities. Uh, I, I buy straw hats in December, not July. I sell them in July. The words of the master. We'll be right back. I'm talking with a very popular Howard Ruff. I didn't uh, see this, Howard. Popular but I with whom? <laughs> uh, you haven't been reading my press lately. <laughs> uh, Johnny Carson is uh, uh, one of the owners. Uh, this is a Carson Broadcasting Corporation, one of the owners of uh, Channel 5 Television, uh, Mr. Herb Kaufman as well. And um, he mentioned your book and read a little piece out of it the other night. I missed that. Tell us. Yeah, one of that. my fans uh, wrote in. Uh, and something about the book which he thought was pretty funny and read it. I, I have a chapter in there about the government bureaucracy, about government interference in our lives and how we give them so much power and they misuse it. The chapter was called, When You Have a Hammer in Your Hand, Everything Looks Like a Nail. <laughs> and uh, one example in there, bureaucracy run crazy, was run absolutely wild, was when a, uh, a bureaucrat decided that notices had to be sent out to everybody who died, notifying them that their benefits from government had ceased. And when questioned, they said, well, we have to notify everybody's benefits have ceased, and the regulations do not distinguish between the living and the dead. So, dear sir, you're dead. You don't get any more benefits. So Johnny read that and thought that was pretty funny. That's great. And unfortunately... It's terrible. <laughs> it's not great. It's awful. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's yeah. uh, uh, bureaucracy, and, and we could get into that. It would be a whole... Well, the only reason I touch on that in the book is I think that's one of the major economic threats to the country. It's this fourth 
branch of government we've created that is so all powerful and it's expanding at such an incredible rate that costs us so much money and causes the government to inflate the currency to pay those bills. And it's a major fact of life. And all I wanted to do was establish in here we're going to have a lot more inflation for a whole lot of reasons, and the growth of the bureaucracy is one of the major reasons. Howard, why don't we just declare, as I'm not saying this is right, but uh, a, a businessman, he, he's in, he gets in debt. So why don't we just declare bankruptcy, the country, and start all over again? Just erase it and say, okay, now we'll start all over. We will. Uh, we will do that. We do it one of two ways, though. One way for a country to declare bankruptcy is to devalue its currency and then pay off all of its uh, debts with uh, to the penny with dollars that aren't worth anything. The Germans paid off all their debt in 1923 after four years of monstrous inflation with money that had the total purchasing power of one American penny. That's one form of bankruptcy. Inflation is a form of bankruptcy. Uh, the money is losing value almost as fast as the national debt is increasing, so they really have kind of stood still in relative purchasing power terms over the years. So that's what we are doing. It's just another, it's a sneaky way to do it and while preserving your good credit rating. This way you have it both ways. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left. What, I know you covered it briefly when we started, um, what does the future look to you briefly? What can we expect? It's going to look like malaria, chills and fever. Uh, we'll have deep recessions, which are chills. We'll have runaway inflations in between time, which is the fever. Some places in the country will suffer depression, the Northeast, the big cities in the Midwest. Uh, other places will boom. It'll be inflationary for all of us. Uh, when we argue whether we're going to have a depression or not. You have to remember about the man who drowned in a lake with an average depth of three feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in, it isn't a depression when you average everything out, but there are places where now, which now are suffering depression levels. Uh, so we're going to see more of that. A wild roller coaster economy where, you, where the old fashioned buy and hold forever investment philosophy simply won't work anymore. You're going to have to make total 100% switches of your investments every two years, is what it looks like for the rest of this decade at least. So my function as a financial advisor is to help people identify those major turns, get them on the right side of the markets. Is Reagan going to get reelected? Probably not. I don't think he's going to run. Um, he told me when I interviewed him prior to the, to the election that if he did what he had to do during the first term, he'd have so many enemies he wouldn't be able to be reelected re the next time around anyway. And that mill is now going. I think the president will break his heart in the White House. Howard, it's been a great pleasure for myself personally. I've always been a fan of yours, and uh, you have a great many fans here in Las Vegas because of your show, because of your book, and because of yourself. I in appreciate hot weather like this, everybody needs fans. <laughs> thank you very much, Howard, and thank, thank you, you for joining us. And we will see you tomorrow morning right here on page five. Thank you. <laughs>